Chapter 25, Wicked. Hyun was very eager to know more about Gabrielle's condition. Though he felt at ease about the thought that it might be a twist of fate that they got separated, he was sad to think that Gabrielle suffered heavily. Losing her memory of her past love was very painful. Nancy gave him the information to help him understand Reeler's memory loss. Dr. Chua was his name, a neurologist of the Good Shepherd Hospital. I am unsure if he was still connected to that hospital. That's all I could remember. It had been too long. You see, Mr. Han, back to his same routine at his office, Hyun decided to take Riel out for lunch. Then when they were on their way back, Hyun Kyu received a call. Hey, Hyun, Benny here. I'm vacating your condo now, and I have men cleaning and fixing your place as per our agreement. Mind if you come here to look at the place before I leave, Benny requested. Now. As in now. Why leave in a hurry? Hyun Ki was anxious to know. I am getting married. I bought a house for my bride because she's not in on living in condos. He laughed happily. Okay, I'm coming since I'm still on the road, supposed to be on my way back to the office. Junie, let's go see my condo. Then he turned to Riel, telling him about the caller. Benny is my best friend, way back in college. He was renting my condo, and now he is getting married, so he is leaving my place. We'll go there for an ocular inspection. How about that, sweetheart? Well, okay. How can I say no? Riel answered meekly. After Junie parked the car, the lovers entered the condominium, and Riel was amazed by its grandest sophistication, relaxed and secure environment, and wealth out amenities perfect for diversity lifestyle. Hyunaki's place is a vast space of a two-bedroom unit with natural sunlight from the glass windows. Benny stood by the door talking to someone over his phone when he immediately recognized Hyunki. He was stunned by the lady with him. She was a perfect beauty in his eyes, like a goddess descending from the clouds carrying a fragrant breeze. Hey, Benny. What are you staring at, like you're fascinated by a fairy goddess that passed by you? Have you seen one? Hyunki joked. Who are you with, your girl? Asked Benny. Girl? Benny, she's not just my girl. She's my fiancé tapping him on his shoulder. You're so lucky, dude. By the way, I'm Benny, extending his hand to Riel. Hyunaki cut Benny's handshake to Riel and jokingly said, You are getting married soon, man. And it looks like you got starstruck by my fiancé Hyunaki joked again while he wrapped his arms around Riel. Are you not showing what's happening inside? Hyunaki suggested, walking straight inside his condo and tagging Riel. Riel looked around the apartment and was fascinated by the view outside the glass window. The building she sees are like towering structures adorned with sky blue glass windows that sparkle in the sunlight. Hyunaki approached her, wrapped her waist around his arms, lowered his head, his chin touching Riel's shoulder, and whispered, You like my place? Riel she turned her head close to his face and answered warmly, I love it, Hyunaki. You know how to choose your place, huh, and kissed his cheek. Hey lovers. You're distracting my men here. So, what can you say now, Johamnida? Did you like it? So, can we leave now, bro? Hyunki nodded and gave a thumbs up. After Benny and his hired crew were left, Hyunki and Riel were left alone. I still need to fill this place with things. Are you with me? Sweetheart, he looked at her gently. Looking at her beautiful face fascinated him more. He slowly touched her face, and as their eyes met, he stooped a little touching Reeler's face with his, then he touched her lips, caressing them with his thumb. Hyun felt her lips smooth and moist. He gently damped his lips and opened her mouth with his kiss. Riel felt his heavy breathing, the scent of his breath was like a mint, making her eyes close. Her hands felt cold, and her fingernails dug deep into her palm, feeling the sensation creeping from her head down to her nape. Hyun kissed her passionately, and Riel reciprocated, both became unmindful of time and space. Riel, Though feeling weak, slowly let go of him and whispered to him that it was time to go. Hyun took her close and had her lean on him, embracing her tight as if he did not want to let her go. Riel smiled sweetly at him, then whispered again, It's time to go, love. She fixed her hair and tacked a piece of it behind her ear. She took her face powder from her bag to retouch and added more color to her lips while Hyunaki watched her lovingly. Back at the office, Huan Chul called his staff and asked about the whereabouts of all the posters pictures, and films of the commercial, which were documented in the files, but he could not see these posters displayed anywhere in the building. He thought these were missing at the designated walls of the building, even the pictures which should be displayed in their office itself. When nobody could answer, 
he went straight to Hyun Ki's office and discussed the missing documented files of their recent commercial. Hyun Ki was shocked by what he learned, and his face darkened. I suspect that one of your staff sabotaged this, and yet, Nam Joon took this lightly? I have someone in mind. Hyun Ki reacted. He stood up, and Huan followed suit and stormed the marketing division, asking for Megan. Huan Chul was confused, asking his brother about a suspicion of Megan. Why Megan? Hyun we had a severe misunderstanding that only the two of us know, and I am positive she wanted to get back at me. Huan Chul kept his confusion to himself. Megan was coming in from her office break and appeared nervous upon seeing their CEO's angry face. Where are they, Megan? Where are the posters and the film of our commercial? Asked Hyun Ki with a darkened look. Megan remained calm and numb. I don't know what you are talking about, Hyun Shi replied, looking ignorant about the issue. You are talking to your CEO, Megan. Answer me properly. Hyun Ki was fuming in anger. Megan felt cold water dousing her. She came to her senses and defensively said, I threw them away. Yes, I disposed all of them. So what it is to you? She retorted with a qualifier smile. The staff in the marketing division was aghast. After everything I've done for you, you just threw me away, so that's what you get. I also threw away all that mattered to you. Hyun Ki pulled her shoulders in anger close to his face, looked at her with cold eyes, and recklessly pushed his hold, and Megan almost lost her balance. Megan was shaking in fear. How could you do this? You don't have the right to destroy the company's property. That is not yours to decide on. Megan Hyun Ki lost his temper and nearly wanted to hit her, but Huang quickly grasped his wrist to stop him. Megan mustered her courage and did not stop her argument there. You are so angry not because of losing the posters, but because it was realer's face were on those posters, and everything was lost, thrown away. Am I right, Hyun Ki? Poor, poor Hyun Ki, Megan remarked sarcastically. Holding back his anger, he picked up the phone and requested that the HR manager come to the marketing office and have her settle the issue with Megan before he could lose his mind. What? What? You cannot threaten me, Mr. CEO. You're the one who started it all. Megan was furious and fearless in throwing blame on Hyun Ki. Those around them, the staff and Huan Chul, couldn't move and said nothing, watching, so shocked by her sharp tongue. Mrs. Miranda came in shocked by the things Megan said. She went in the middle to shut Megan up and tried to pull her out of the office. Megan refused to stop and kept on annoying Hyun Ki, so Mrs. Miranda told one of the employees to call security, which was then Megan stopped. Huan Chul pulled his brother to a corner and spoke with concern. What has this something to do with you and Megan, the young? I am troubled and confused. Why did she dispose of the posters and other paraphernalia that come with the commercial? What have you done to turn her into an impetus person, or a witch? A better word for that, Huan wanted to know, very furious. Nothing, let us forget about that. She'll never cause harm again cause I am firing her, Hyun Ki firmly made his point. Hyun Ki entered the room where Megan was held and talked to Mrs. Miranda. Since she cannot produce the missing commercial items, I want you to make her pay for them. She will not receive anything, withdrawing all her benefits, and she will not be given an honorable dismissal despite her years of service. Not even a clean clearance I was also thinking of sending her to jail, but never mind. Do as I previously said instead. How could you, Hyun Ki? You used me. You're nothing but a cold, heartless heartbreaker. You're nothing but an apathetic user, and now you would want to get rid of me just like that, huh Megan was frantic. All right. I didn't dispose of them. I just stacked them in the storage room. Now you're happy, Megan admitted angrily. Huan Chul was surprised by her childish action and commanded the staff to look for the missing items in the stock room. Hyun Ki turned to Mrs. Miranda with his cold stare at Megan. If she's telling the truth, she can only receive her severance pay, and her dismissal still stands but no graceful exit. Everything she said cannot be taken back. She said what she said, so that's it. The things she said were damaging, no more second chances. That is my final decision, Mr. Hyunaki left with a darkened face. Megan sneered at Hyun, but he gave a dominant smile as he left the room. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned, by William Congreve. No one is angrier than a rejected woman who has love. Keep following the Windows of the Heart series, more exciting episodes for you. Remember to click my YouTube channel subscribe, share, and like buttons. You can follow me too at TikTok.